Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. Today is very exciting as I am going to talk about the new JLo and Inglot collection. I will try to make this video as quick and efficient as possible. There is a lot of information to share in terms of pricing, products, the formulas are new, so we'll speak about what's in those formulas, what makes them different from the original Inglot formula. I've got my notes, I wrote it all down. Got the phone on standby just for some reinforcement. I'm happy to report that I didn't go nuts. It is a limited edition collection. I am still thinking about buying more things, but I thought that what I purchased was a good start, at least to begin the conversation about J. Lo and Inglot and, you know, chatting about what am I buying next. If you want to see what I purchased from the new J. Lo and Inglot collection, what we think about it, how it looks, live in action, then keep on watching. As you see, my foundation's already done, uh, eyebrows are on, prep my lids, powder to set. Now, let's talk about what we got here. Anastasia is in for the ride, but basically, this is what I purchased. I got the pans only, and I put it all in a, a Z palette. <sighs> I am lucky enough to live in NYC, and we have an actual Inglot store. It's on Broadway between 47th and 48th Streets. Walked in, they had the whole setup, everything from the JLo collection. I wanted to pull up the, uh, the statement about the collection on here. And I also wanted to read on the inspiration behind the collection, why JLo wanted to team up with Ingla in the first place. <sighs> Ready? Let's go. After decades serving as a muse for the makeup industry and beauty inspiration for women all over the world, including myself. Jennifer Lopez is now stepping behind the scenes and debuting a limited edition collection in partnership with global beauty brand Inglot Cosmetics. The extensive color line will bring Jennifer's and Inglot's shared vision of strong femininity to life and offer women diverse ways to express themselves through beauty. Finally, everyone can now achieve their own authentic JLo glow. Listen, that was pretty much the inspiration behind my purchase, so spot on. In her words, the capsule collection we created with Ingla is filled with my go-to products in my favorite colors, which are mostly neutral, but we'll get to that in a second. We have everything from mascara, lipsticks, eyelashes, blush, eyeshadow, and of course, bronzer. What I think is unique and exciting is our Freedom System palette, which allows you to create your own personalized palette with the specific colors and products that you need. Now you no longer have to buy that five-piece eyeshadow kit to get the one color you really want, which is thoughtful. I appreciate that. The Freedom System she's talking about, this is not a JLo one, it's an Inglot one where it's a magnetic uh, top with the actual palette and depending on you can get one with wells already designed in the palette you could get without the wells so you could have more freedom thus the name freedom system in placing whatever palettes you want ranging from eyeshadows blushes face powders highlighters what held me back from getting a palette yesterday was because i didn't want to drop so much money at once and i wanted to get a feel of the actual makeup and perhaps that would compel me to get a palette motivating me more to get a palette is that this collection is limited edition and as a makeup collector i will like a a compact of some sort palette of some sort that says J jennifer lopez on it with inglot not necessary especially when you see the pricing of it all I like that you are able to just get the pans, but with Inglot's system, there's nothing sold in a compact. It's all sold pan only, and you will have to get the separate compact or palette depending on what pans you get and how many. I kept some of the packaging just so you can see. This is the bag that I received. It has Jennifer Lopez Inglot, and it also has, hard to see with the sun, her logo on it as well are some of the boxes this is where the pressed powder came in and this is where the face blush came in it has the jennifer lopez inglots writing on there in a beautiful rose gold i love the rose gold on the matte black i think that's gorgeous this is one of the shadow boxes never mind these nails i'm gonna get to these in a second because i just have hazardly painted my nails in the, in the store, but I'll show you the colors later. Okay, for pricing for each, I also laid out and drew diagrams of the different palettes 
you can buy in terms of what they look like with the different well designs. First product we have is the HD Press Powder in shade Nude 4. You get 0.28 ounces of product for $21. If you were to get the circular palette, it will cost $11. Both products, the whole kit, will come up to $32. If you want the compact, you will have to dish out the extra $11, just so you know. Next, we have the Face Blush in Charm. It's also labeled as J125. Really nice to know behind the pants, anything that's in the JLo collection, the number starts with the J. Very helpful. You get 0.21 ounces for $13. Out of the palettes, the one that has a well for the face blush is the one with the two eyeshadows and blush well. That goes for $12. And also you have the longer one, the first one that launched as like a teaser palette you can get before the collection actually released. That's for $13. The biggest one that has two face powder wells comes up to $19 and you also get for eyeshadow wells in the bigger palette. Next, we have the HD Highlighter Trio in Silver Dust, also labeled as J143. You get 0.25 ounces of product, and this pan goes for $22. Eye swatch though for, this is the shade that combines all the highlighters. This is the lighter, the middle, and the last one. This is a really, it comes out to like a really nice light rose gold combination of shades. I really love the representative at Ingla who helped me purchase these products. He was very practical, even encouraged me to get a pressed powder instead of the bronzer just because of the color matching for me. I'll talk about the bronzers further because there is one that's called Sunkiss that's really, really orange. It doesn't look orange online, on screen, but in person I was like, whoa. And I didn't get a sculpting powder because I felt like there were so many browns and they all looked very similar in under, not in undertone, but it was all, there was a lot of brown involved. And I felt if I got one powder that just looked really great on me, I didn't feel the need to get a sculpting powder as well. Maybe I will. Again, the makeup collector's like, get it, get it, you don't have one, you need it. And I'm like, I don't because I have so many like sculpting powders, contour powders. We'll see. I'm going to try on the pressed powder. We'll see what we think if a contour powder is necessary. The last three now we'll go over are the matte eyeshadows. I was also told by the representative that they reformulated everything for this collection. The powders, the eyeshadows, even the pigments. I'll go over some of the ingredients that are in these products. I forgot to mention in the press powder. Let's rewind a little bit. Once I swatch the eyeshadows for you, I'll go back with each product just so you know what's in these formulas that's so different from the original Inglot ones. I decided to just stick with the matte because there is a new finish in the JLo collection. It's called I believe it's called like a glimmer finish where it's a matte base with really nice sparkle. But what I found in store is that some of these matte base sparkle shadows, usually the sparkle blends out when you apply your lid, but the sparkles stay and they're actually quite dazzling. They felt soft, they blended really well on my hand. I did it, I had so much eyeshadow on at the time that I didn't try it on in store. But I thought I'll hold off because I love matte shades and I was very curious to see how they apply. And if I really wanted to, I got the loose pigment, which will serve as my lid color. And if I like how that goes, I'll go back, swatch again and decide if I wanted to get one of those glimmer shadows. On the back of the pan, it. It's listed as like DS. I'm not sure what that stands for uh, in terms of what the matte base and glimmer is. They're also neutral. There was like an olive color, which was like the only pop of color she had out of the, all the eyeshadows in her collection. And the really nice eggplant. There, the other finish is pearl. So you have the pearl, the matte base with the glimmer sparkle, and just the matte. The pearls were really nice. They were really creamy, had nice pigmentation, were very smooth. I'm on the fence about it all. If 
any of you have received those eyeshadows, let me know down below. I'd love to hear about it. Okay, I'm sorry, I digress. Let's get into these shadows! The first out of the three I have is Cafe Au Lait, also labeled as J311, $10 for 0.1 ounce. Next is Bordeaux, also as J331, $10, 0.1 ounce. Last we have Pitch Black, also known as J325, 0.1 ounce, $10. And we swatched Pitch Black next to Inglot's regular black, and this is blacker, for sure. Next to each other, it's amazing that regular Inglot black had a, looked a little more gray. She, she turned up the black for this one for a collection, so. Huh. Now let's go over formula. The pressed powder here that looks really smooth feels really smooth when you look in the pan it does have some sparkle in it and reading off of the website this is premium silicone powder for a smooth silky finish it has diamond dust oh just like hourglass excuse me highlight skin adding a glow to the complexion HD pigments reflects light and hides imperfections enriched mica modified to ensure a better adherence with highlighting properties oh provides a soft focus effect to hide wrinkles and imperfections. Because this is a pressed powder, it is designed to use all over your face or on certain parts of your face. I'm using it as a bronzer today. That's not holding me back from considering buying another shade. I'm just putting it out there. Good to know though, this formula sounds amazeballs. I just applied it over the bronzer I had yesterday for like, immediate satisfaction but today i'm looking forward to seeing how it performs on its own on freshly foundationed skin for the face blush it contains vitamin e sponge gourd oil moisturizes and smooths preventing skin from excessive moisture loss thus improving skin elasticity also has treated pigments hmm so she's putting a little bit of skincare benefit into this formula i like where she's going with this very nice very nice for the highlighter trio highlighting pigments hd pigments reflect light and hide imperfections wonderful enriched mica like there is in the pressed powder Again, modified to ensure a better adherence with highlighting properties, provides a soft focus effect to hide wrinkles and imperfections. Now with this trio, she also has a loose highlighter, which I didn't get. I'm still considering it. I'm still considering it. Depending on how you build the color, you can build it to create a dramatic mirror-like effect or touch lightly for a romantic glow. Good to know, very versatile in terms of the different finishes you can achieve excited about that eyeshadow formula i quickly went over while i was taking down my notes has really nice properties as well to nourish the eyelid it's called hold on matte shades contain vitamin e and this ingredient called subaki oil it's spelled like this next to me it provides long lasting hydration and protects skin against excessive moisture loss thus improves skin elasticity flexibility and tension and these eyelids are getting a little not elastic and non-tense so very much appreciated jlo thank you very much those are all the details about the products price ounces formula let's get to applying hey there we still got the swatches on oh i'm so excited i think i'll apply the press powder first why not the lighter shade in the collection when i swatched it on hand had a beautiful radiance to it i almost bought it to place under my eyes but i was like wait hold on home slice i'm gonna take my morphe r7 brush in now with the pressed powder in nude four let's see how this goes oh that's pretty what i like about using pressed powders as a bronzer is that because it is designed to use all over the face melt into the skin look like skin that that's gonna bring the same benefits into a bronzer use as well which is really nice i like the color of it a lot it's not too orange not too cool it gives my face really nice structure without being overly contoured place some on my forehead jawline i like this a lot i and looking closely i do see some sparkle here 
on my cheek because the bronzers, the boogie down bronzers are mattes. If you're not into radiance, I wouldn't purchase the pressed powder for bronzer purposes. I would just get the bronzer from the collection because it is matte. So it won't leave you with that sparkle. But it blends out really nicely. It doesn't look uh, grainy or textured on my skin. It does add a nice radiance. If you are dry skin type or normal and you need that extra bit of moisture on the skin, then I would try the pressed powder for sure. The highlighter. I think I want to... Hmm. I could do this in several ways. I could apply with a brush first and then I could go in with my sponge. <laughs> I'm going to run it across just to get the, the overall color benefit from three shades. That's nice too! It could be very sparkly. I think I would rather apply this with a damp sponge because I see some of the pigments just sitting like I could I could have a, a smoother finish. So I'm gonna take my beauty sponge and I'm just gonna run it across, actually I'm gonna run it across these two shades here. Hmm, that's nice. I like that better. Some formulas I think are just better suited for a damp sponge application or just maybe on damp skin. After we put on the rest of the makeup, I'll go into my Fix Plus and apply a little more maybe with the brush to see if that yields a smoother finish. So far though, I love the shade. The other trio has like a lighter pearl shade, a coral shade, and like a beige shade, which was really nice too. Definitely doesn't look as rose gold as the silver dust, but I would consider that one too. I consider everything. Shut up. Now let's get into this blush. I don't think I'll buy the other blushes because the other one was like really true pink. It's called Ballerina Pink and the almost like a really like hot magenta color. This one I felt was like a beautiful rose color which I favor with along with peaches and corals in the blush category. It's right between the bra- oh. Oh snap! And I tried this on too last night and I I forgot this this packs a punch real fast. I put on way too much on that side. I'm just taking a loose powder brush to dial that down. Alright, that's the blush. I love the shade of it, but go in carefully because as you just saw, I punched in way too much color at once and had to dilute it a little bit. Thing that a big powder brush and some loose powder can't fix. I'm gonna zoom you in closer for these eyeshadows! First going in with Cafe Olay with my trusty way number 16. Now from the Inglot shadows I already have, the mattes do feel smoother for sure. Okay, okay. Very nice, very nice. Gonna make sure I clean this brush because I used subculture yesterday. Oh, it's gonna get wild if you don't clean that brush. Next with my number six in with Bordeaux. It's like it's gonna... Let me see, hold on. Oh, oh, okay. Got it. Noted. I wish I had my sales rep's name because I was contemplating maybe getting just one lid shade out of the eyeshadow pants and he was like girlfriend just use your highlighter trio to highlight your brow bone and put on your lid I was like thank you for being the practical voice in this transaction because I'm surely not being it that has some really nice depth I mean when I apply it on my lid it looks it does it looks dark brown but it doesn't have that same warmth that it looks like it has when you see it in the pan but it's a nice break from black if you want that intensity without using black not bad i like how this is blending i love the shade i mean in person the the smokiness is really nice for day maybe it could be a little less because again 
I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I could get away with this as a smoky daily look because of my skin color. I think it'll be perfect for daily if you are uh, darker than me, but if you're lighter than me, then I will go in easy with Bordeaux and just maybe use it as a liner. I'm gonna go in with Cafe Au Lait under my lash line. Going Bordeaux right here. Now, now, my bad, I mistakenly forgot to include the pure pigments. I decided to get this one. It has JLo in the little jar and it has her logo on the cap in the same matte black and rose gold finish. We have the pure pigment eyeshadow, Blazing Rose J411, 0.07 ounces for $25. And this formula has sponge gourd oil, which has similar benefits to the matte and other finished eyeshadows for that moisture, elasticity building properties. Yeah, we're doing the cut crease, guys. I'm gonna use my Laura Mercier Longwear Concealer to cut the crease. <laughs> too bad it could have turned out way worse I don't do these very often because they take me a little bit of time but I discover the more I do it the easier it feels to do so hmm, I don't know because we're using this pressed pigment I'm gonna go in with glitter glue now on top of the concealer because I want this pressed pigment to stick using the Too Faced glitter glue it's just the one I had on hand and yet glitter glue will do Applying on the same brush I used to carve out the concealer with. Just patting that there. One lid at a time, just so that one lid doesn't dry while I'm applying on the other. Go in with the loose pigment. I'm being awfully dangerous doing this without baking underneath, but whatever. Oh, snap. Okay, that is blazing rose indeed. Casualties weren't too bad. I have a little fallout, but not so much that is going to wreak havoc. I'm taking my little tapered brush here, and I'm going to get some loose powder on it because I just want the little specks here to whisk away. But because I learned my lesson, I will now, before I go in on the other lid, just put in some extra powder here. Just because it's easier to whisk the pigment away if it does get on your face. I'm taking my small pencil brush and I'm just going to, with a little bit of Bordeaux and Café Au Lait, over the border of the pigment to clean up the line. With my number six, I'm going to blend in at this transition point to help smooth out that gradient. Here's a close-up. This pigment is insane. I mean, the shine on this, crazy. Not too bad, and definitely applying a little bit of loot. Oh, God. Oh no, we got some casualties. But again, you know, we're just gonna be a little sparkly around this area. <laughs> it's fine. It definitely calls for some wing liner. I, when I was in store, I also picked up their, oh god, where is it? Their pot liner in number 77, which is known to be like the black, the black, the black. Pop that on, get some lashes on as well, because I think we're gonna need a little help given this pigment is just like powwow. And I'll be right back. Of course, when I'm applying my lashes, I get like the hugest sneeze attack. All right, apply some Lily lashes in the style NYC. Very fluffy, think perfect for this look. Doesn't block the lid too much, so you can still see the pigment. I found from experience that applying a gel pot liner is the most effective way to get the wing on because when you try to uh, paint a wing with a felt tip going over pigment it ruins the pen and it gets gunky it doesn't give you a smooth line or if you end up doing a halo eye you could get away with not doing 
a wing and just using the lash band as like your liner so kind of have to figure out the pros and cons with that one surprisingly i didn't buy a lipstick from the collection because i was on the fence about the shades i'm very picky about nudes and the nudes i currently have i love and i think are perfect for my skin tone the one that my favorites thus far have been the urban decay and kristen leanne uh comfort mats the this one here and also the dior rouge lip in jungle matte i think ooh, by far has been my most favorite nude you know, put a little, there we go that's better it just gives my lips like that shape pouty effect the glosses look beautiful, but because I already bought Shayla's Neat Freak from her ColourPop collab, I feel like they're very similar. That shade anyway to JLo's, the gold lips shade she had in the collection. When I get that in the mail, I'll be sure to review it and swatch, but that's what kind of kept me from getting the, the JLo gloss because I feel like I had a similar gloss already coming in the mail. Mm. Again, it's limited edition. I don't want to miss out, blah, 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 blah. Before we wrap up, I just wanted to quickly go over the nail shades. I mean, these are terrible swatches, but I quickly did them in store. And if you love nail polish and were thinking about buying them, I took note of the shades and which fingernail they're on. This shade is Primrose. Sorry about giving you the finger. This shade is Latte. This shade is Light Mocha. Poor Pinky that just got massacred. This is in Beige. So they're really nice nude shades. I mean, if I were to choose, I'm leaning towards Primrose and Beige because I love the, uh, the lighter shades and how they look on my skin tone. These just look too closely related to my skin tone and I feel... It's hard to distinguish them from my actual finger, and this, and I wanted a little something uh, more pink, uh, maybe a little brighter. And I believe they retail for my phone's charging. I'm gonna put the price up here. The formula is said to allow oxygen to permeate the nail polish, thus allowing your nail bed to still uh, get the breath of air that it needs. I know I'm so scientific in my explanations. For other products that I did not purchase, I'll be sure to put all those prices down below if you are considering getting something else that I did not pick up. Quickly going over, the Boogie Down Bronze Pant is $22. I did not pick it up, but it is a dollar less than the pressed powder. Uh, it's looking good still. I don't think it faded in any way. But maybe, I'm not sure if the Boogie Down Bronze is going to give me a little more color, a little bit more lasting, long lasting. But I feel like the pressed powder will be long lasting because it is a complexion product and meant to set foundation and to keep the face on for a longer period of time. If anything, I'll probably pick up the palette with the uh, two... Well, that's right. If anything, I'll probably pick up the palette with the two face wells and the four eyeshadow wells because I just want one JLo palette that I could reuse and just to just to have it for this collection since it is limited edition. I'm also on the fence about purchasing more eyeshadow. Not that these didn't blow me away, but they have been so many eyeshadows that have come out that I'm absolutely in love with. And not to say that this formula sucks but i love the makeup forever singles which i think have an impeccable formula i do think the shadows are a bit softer going back to inglot now than their original press pan formula because these have a little more grit to them they're they're very pigmented I feel the JLo eyeshadows are a touch softer, and that's probably because of the oil. I could feel it when you when I swatched from my Inglot shadow, Inglot, Inglot shadow, the surface of the shadow had a little more grit, and when you swatch the JLo shadow, it's a lot smoother, and maybe that is because of the Subaki oil that gives it a little more finesse and smoothness. As for the highlighter shade, I think that's what I wanted to do. I don't have my Fix Plus on me, but I do have my Mario Badescu uh, Aloe Cucumber and Green Tea. This is just to melt the powders a little bit more. And also, I think I want to go back in with the highlighter shade because I mentioned that probably it'll give me a little, uh, a better finish 
if applied on damp skin. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. That's a lot better. Okay, good to know. I also, when swatching in store, found that the more you buff out the trio powder, the better it looks. And I feel that it's more helpful when, instead of just punching it on, that you blend it into the skin and I feel would leave a, a lot better of a finish. I'm gonna take the lighter portion of the trio and punch that into the inner corner of my eye. I'm taking the middle shade here for the brow bone. I see under the nose, why not? I also forgot to put mascara on my lower lashes. Hold on. All right, friends, I think that's the finished look. From what I purchased, I, I'm happy that I didn't go ham and buy everything. I think from what I purchased, it gave me a good idea of what the collection represents, color-wise, formula-wise. I feel the eyeshadows are a lot smoother. Uh, they blend a lot better than the original Inglot eyeshadows. And not that Inglot shadows don't blend well, but they are harder pressed and maybe take a little more finessing and a particular brush to smooth out that finish. I am not a makeup artist, I'm a makeup enthusiast, but from what I've experienced and from what I've been using from different brands, I feel that, comparably so, that these are a lot smoother. I will check in and just take photographs to post on this video just to show how the la the eyeshadows last throughout the day. The Inglot pigments, without a doubt, I mean, I've always known they have been exceptional. And I'll post the link for a holiday look I did two years ago using an Inglot pigment that just blew me away in terms of the color, the shine, the dazzle. Beautiful. And I love the pressed powder and the blush. I love this blush color. It's very like a rose flush type of hue. I think that looks very natural on my skin tone. I definitely won't be picking up the other ones because I think out of the three, this is the best suited for me. The I'm thinking about getting the loose highlighter because I think that'll be like a beautiful extra gleam on the skin. Uh, I love the highlighter trio. I'm not sure if I'm going to get the other one because I think this... This shade is better suited for my skin tone. Definitely still on the fence about picking up the other eyeshadows because there are a matte base with a glimmer. And I'm not sure I'm particularly crazy about that type of finish. It is fun. It is different. I don't see myself using those type of types of shadows often. It's definitely either matte in the crease or a pearlized foil metallic shade on the lid. Now, they are the matte base shades that I played with before that blend really nicely into the crease even though they do have some sparkle but when I was swatching them in store the JLo ones I felt that the sparkle kind of ran amok and traveled a lot on the lid and I'm not too sure if I wanted that effect all over my lid the shades are beautiful they're very JLo very neutral you're not gonna get pops of color in this collection friends I mean again when I mentioned before there was like that one olive shade that was like the, the the color shade out of her capsule collection I'll think about it I'll go back in store and play because it was very overwhelming trying everything and deciding what to get and not to go nuts the total for the two face blushes, three shadows, and the pressed powder came to $139. These are just the pans. It is more expensive if you decide to purchase any of the palettes. I think I'm going to get the bigger palette. I'm not sure if I'm going to get maybe just the compact, the round one. We shall see. I did try some of the lipsticks, the matte shades. They feel good, but make sure your lips are moisturized. The one cream nude shade I didn't apply because I already had the matte shade on looked nice on my hand, but again, I have to apply on my lips just to see if it looks too warm or too peachy. I will be sure to come back on here and film any updates, any new products I decide to purchase. Please let me know down below if you picked up any of the Jennifer Lopez and Inglot capsule collection. I'm very happy for her. I'm a huge JLo fan and I'm happy that she was able to share some of her favorite makeup shades and formulas and products with the fam. Quickly to note, she does have a uh, false eyelashes that come cut in half for easier application and she does have a gel pot liner and mascara that is more brown black rather than pitch black not too sure if I'll be picking that up because I want my eye uh, my liner and mascara to be black I know it's nicer for like a daily look I'm still playing with the thought 
I saw the wand in store and it's a very small, small wand. So maybe really good for the lower lashes. I have to double check to see if it is waterproof or water, water resistant. Definitely will put all that information down below as well. And I think that's the wrap. Thank you friends so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another review, demo, chit chat, get ready with me or review. Did I say that already? I don't know. Take care and I'll see you again soon.